In this video, you will learn maximum number of tips and tricks anywhere available on YouTube in the shortest time. In other words, I've made this video as concise as it possibly could be without missing any information out. Let's get started. Transpose. So, if I select all the table with the titles at the top, right click, copy, click on other cell, right click, paste special. Here you see a checkbox for transpose, select that, click OK. And now you can see the titles are in vertical order and the data is in horizontal order. Quick analysis tool. To activate it, you need to at least select two cells and then an icon like this appears called quick analysis. So let's select the whole data in this spreadsheet. Then let's select on this quick tool analysis and it gives you a, a lot of different tabs starting with formatting, data formatting, color scale, icons, then you can go to charts, another fantastic way to represent your data. Then you can go to mathematical functions such as sum, average, and if you click on here, you could even access more. You can also quickly turn this data into a table, pivot table, and more. There are also spark lines such as columns, line, win and loss. So let's go to tables and select a simple table to show you how quickly you could create a table using quick analysis or to fit columns or rows. So if I bring my cursor right in between the two columns, you can see the symbol is changed. Now if I double click, it will auto fit the column. I can do the same thing with a row. So you can see the row is now bigger than it should be. Now I double click between and it fixed the rows. But if I want to do a multiple columns together, I select the columns I want to do. Then I can change any one of them to any size I want and it will fit to the same size as the column I just moved. But if you want all of them to auto fit, then double click in between. Show formulas. So if you go to the file, go to the options, Go to the advanced, scroll down, then you see a place called display options for this worksheet. You can choose any worksheet and then you need to check this show formulas in cells instead of their calculated values. Then click on OK and now you can see each individual formulas in each individual cells. This is very good for double checking whether your formulas are consistent in a glance. For now, turn it off. Another way to look at the formula is just to click on it and top here it shows you the formula or if you double click you could see the formula and its references which is also very useful to check individual formulas. Filter. One of my favorite tool in Excel is filter. First go to the first cell of the data underneath the titles and then go to the data tab. And in the sort and filter group, you will see an icon for filter. Just click on it and it will create a filter for all the data in that spreadsheet. It's really easy to use. For example, if you click on this drop down for artist, at the moment it shows all, but let's say we just want Beatles. So unselect all and just select Beatles and then click on OK. And you can see data from Beatles is only selected. And you can also see that the icon is changed from a drop down to a funnel. To bring it back, click back on the funnel and click on select all, click OK. And now you got all your data back. Drop down list. Let's copy the artists, put it in some other range. This is our data that we want to create a list from and we want the list to be displayed here. So what we have to do next is go to the data tab, go to data tools group, select data validation. In here, select list source. You can go and select this range that we created and then you click OK. Now you can see that this cell contains a list. So if I click on here, I can choose between different artists. Let's delete Bon Jovi here. Let's copy this list and put it here and now the list still works and you can change it to Bon Jovi like that and if you try to enter anything else let's say uh, you don't know the spelling of Beatles and you press enter it would know that you have entered the wrong spelling because it doesn't match what's there in our list. Goal seek. Goal seek is a fantastic tool 
to calculate what value you need in order to get your desired value. Let's say I know this value needs to be 30,000, but I know the interest rate for these two rows, but I don't know the interest rate for this row. So in order to get this 30,000, which is the sum of all this value, I can use goal seek. Or I could manually try to change the value to get to the 30,000, which could be very cumbersome process. Or I could ask Excel to calculate for me. It's really simple. What you need to do is select your target, then go to the data tab, then go to the forecast group, and then select what if analysis. In here, select goal seek. In here, our set value is already selected. We need to now enter a value. As I said, I would like it to be 30,000. And then we should define the value that we want it to change to achieve the 30,000, which is row six, which is this rate, which I'm not sure what it should be. And once I click OK, it will calculate to me the percentage, which comes out to be 8% to get 30,000, which sounds to me good. Hence, I say OK. Remove duplicates. If you look carefully, you will see that we have two duplicates. We got two Bon Jovi's with the same album release and value. So what you can do is to select all the data, then go and click on remove duplicates. Now it will search all the selected data of all the columns because all of them are checked and find duplicates. So if I click OK, you can see here it found a duplicate and has removed it. It means it has deleted it actually. It's not filtered. But if I try again, remove duplicates, and this time I just select artist, you know that I have got two artists, but the albums are different. So they are not really duplicate, but just their names are duplicate. So if I do this, so it will remove one of the rows, which is really not good because it was a different album. So you need to be careful using this. So if I press Ctrl Z, I can bring the data back. If function. So select the cell where you want the if function to be, then click on insert function. Then here search for if and then press enter and you should find if. Select that by double clicking. Now it asks you to define the logical test. For that, we need a kind of an equation. For example, I would say that if this value is greater than four, it will make the cost of that album expensive. So if it is true, I would say expensive. And if it is false, I would say it's cheap. And once you're happy, just press OK. And you can see this is not greater than four, hence it is false, hence it is cheap. So if I double click on here, it does it for other cells as well. And you can see these other ones are more than four, hence they become expensive. Flash fill and auto fill. So how flash fill works is you type something from column B and then you can also add something to it and then press enter and type the second column but this time it predicts what you might enter for the rest of the cells and then if you're happy press enter and it flash fills everything but you need to do this pretty quick so it's time dependent. So when you type something, let it be and a, you need to be pretty quick to press enter and then type the next one. If you put a gap in between your entries, this wouldn't work. How about autofill? Autofill is really simple. So you select a cell, for example, a date. The cell has a corner with a square, which you can select. It becomes a black plus sign. And then clicking and dragging it, would follow a pattern and would auto fill it for you. You can do with the months, with, with the time, with the date. But if you go to a number and do the same thing, it will just copy it. But if you got a pattern and do the same thing, it would follow the pattern. It's pretty clever. So if I press one here and go to the top to this corner and double click on this, it will copy the number all the way until the bottom of the previous column. VLOOKUP. Using VLOOKUP is, is simpler than you think. So let's select the year. We want to know the year of the album that we select. For that, we can use VLOOKUP. To use VLOOKUP, go here to insert a function. Select that and in the search for a function, type VLOOKUP. And then it will find you a closest function. Then click on OK. 
now it gives you a form to fill in first thing is asking is for what value are you looking for I'm looking for a value of album and then it asks me to define a table I would say my table uh, is this by selecting it so you select the range to define the table then it would ask you the column index so when we selected this table this is considered as column one two and three so we are looking for year which is in column two hence you need to type in two then it would ask you whether you want an exact match or an approximate value i suggest you to always go with an exact match because there would be a less risk for errors to do that just type in false and once you're happy just click ok so at the moment it says i couldn't find any value because we didn't select the album so here we come and select any album and now it tells us the year so these days and the year 1995 so another way to use the VLOOKUP is to type in equal, type VLOOKUP, then again asks you for the value, put a comma, define the table, put a comma, type the index, which is 3 in this example, and then put false, press tab, and then press enter. So it gives you the value of the album and the year. So if, if you change it to another album, it gives you the year and the value. In the same way, you could also use edge lookup text to columns imagine you got a set of data in a text or from a website you select them you copy them then you go to one of the cells in excel and you press ctrl v and you paste them but as you can see they all been pasted into one column rather than separate columns because excel doesn't automatically understand the, that this data is supposed to be divided into different columns in order for excel to understand selling all the data go to the data tab go to the data tools group select text to column in here it gives you two options delimited or fixed width because our data is separated by commas we need to select delimited and then press next in here you should define what delimiter you have used it's definitely not a tab and you can see it's comma so just select comma but other options are semicolon space or you can define any other one in here and you can have a preview of the data which looks correct once you're happy press next here you can format different columns you can leave them as general text date but you can do that later as well so once you're happy press finish and you can see that all the data are now separated into different columns paste special values only paste special is very useful for example if you got formulas yes yeah, you can see here i got formulas almost in each cell but i want to copy this information and give it to one of my clients for example but i don't want to share my formulas for that select all the information right click to copy or Control c then select another cell right click and then go to paste special select that and in the paste just select values click ok and now it's just values that are being copied without any formulas people graph so imagine we have got so many countries as clients and these are number of clients we got in each country to make it to display nicely what you can do is to go on insert and go to add-ins and click on this icon to use this you need to activate it by trusting it by clicking on trust this add-in then click on here now we need to select these two rows and click on select data and click on create and visually it shows you how many clients you got in different countries if you click on the setting you can change the style how they are presented or you can go different teams or even different shapes pictures in charts so I've got the chart in here and I want to change this into a picture just double click on this and then format data series opens go to the first one which is fill then select fill and then select picture or texture fill click on insert click from a file select some nice picture and you can see it totally changed it to a picture you could do just to one of them by selecting only one and then going and repeating the same thing and selecting another object you can see now we got a um, apple tree conditional formatting to use conditional formatting select the data that you're interested in then go to the home tab and then select conditional formatting for example you can highlight the texts 
that's greater than let's say 200,000 and then press enter and it will highlight for you the cells that have a value greater than 200,000. Also you can apply a various different condition formatting top 10%, bottom 10% or data and you can apply as you can see a couple of condition formatting on top of each other and that will still work. Or you can define your own rules. This is what I use. I usually define my own rules. For example, if you have done a calculation and if that calculation gives a value, for example, OK, then you can make that cell green. Absolute cell reference versus relative cell reference. For example, we have a house cost of 500,000 and every month we want to take 100 more from this house. One way is to use relative reference which is we subtract column C from column B. So if I would double click in here and then double click in here, now every cell takes 100 addition from 500 and this is called relative cell reference. But if you have a constant value that doesn't change and you use in the equation all the time, the best way is to use absolute reference. To use absolute reference, let's first delete this and delete this. To use absolute reference, all you need to do is to identify the constant value. In this case is the house cost, which is cell B2. All you need to do is to put dollar sign. One dollar sign in front of B makes column B constant and one dollar sign in front of 2 makes row 2 constant. Hence we made cell B2 constant. And now if you press enter this value doesn't change but if I now double click on here I reduce 500 each time because we are having an absolute reference back to the 500,000. Insert screenshot. It's really simple. Go to the insert tab there you see a place on the illustration called screenshots. Select that and you could see the screenshots that are open in other applications. Just select the one that you're interested and it would insert the screenshot. Then you can just easily click on crop and just make it small and just put the information that you are interested in. Then click anywhere outside the image and you're done. You can easily then move it anywhere you want using Claire. So if you look at my disk table and I want to delete this but it is filled with some color so if I delete it will still keep those colors and doesn't totally get rid of everything. So what I can do is to go to the home tab and then select clear. We have different options to clear and if I select clear all it removes all the formatting in those cells such as the fill color, font color, the text, the font style. Power Pivot. Power Pivot is a very powerful data analysis tool for large volumes of data. By default, you don't have Power Pivot as a tab, but to bring the tab, you need to go to the file, you need to go to the options, you need to go to add ins, you need to change manage to come add ins, then click on go, and here you can see Power Pivot. Just check that and click on OK. And you can see a new tab is added and here you can see few of the things that it can do. For example, it can tell you the KPIs of the business, the measures. And if you want to learn more about what it can do, you can go to a website by Microsoft and it gives you some of the tasks that it can perform, create hierarchies, create relationships between tables. You can create sophisticated dashboards to represent large volumes of data. Comment. To add a comment, all you need to do is select the cell you want to add comment, then press Shift and F2, and now you can type anything you want. Let's say too expensive, and now press anywhere. For example, if you got a spreadsheet to check from somebody else, this is one of the best way to give a feedback on the results without changing the spreadsheet. Freeze pans. Knowing freeze pans is essential in handling large data. So I've got a large data here and if I scroll down I lose the column titles and if I scroll to the right I lose the row titles. In order to make sure that I would still be able to view them you need to select a cell below 
the column titles and one to the right to the row titles and then go to the view it's important to select this cell once you're in the view go to the window group and select freeze pans and select freeze pans now if you scroll down you could see the titles are still there no matter how many rows you go down and if I scroll to the right I can still see the first column again you could do that for two columns or three rows fast navigation using control and arrow so if I select this cell A2 and I want to go to the bottom of this long table I could go like this or I could use my mouse but the fastest way to get to the bottom is use control and down arrow so I get from cell C2 to cell C701 I could get to the end by using control and arrow to the right I could get back to the top by using the arrow and then control arrow to the left brings me back where I start status bar info so now looking at the status bar there is no information but if I click in here I select all the data I will have in this spreadsheet and it gives me the average count and the sum but if I want just the total sell price I can just select column sales price and it gives me the average of the sell price the count and the sum and if I right click on it I can also include minimum and maximum and now it gives me the minimum which was seven dollars and maximum three hundred and fifty dollars all in a glance 3d referencing so imagine we have got January February and March house prizes but we forgot to put the total for all these three different months so what you can do is hold your shift key and then select from January to March now we select all three now any changes you make on any cells it will reflect across all the three worksheets so let's say total and then is equals to sum and then select all these then press enter so we got the sum and if I select now each month they would have also the sum for that month but if I want to have an average I got another tab then I type equal and I type average and now I select worksheet one which is for January hold my shift select till March and then I select the total and then I press enter and this has automatically given the average from January to March for that quarter forecast sheet so in order to predict what would our cells be in month 11 and 12 we need to select all the data we got up till now and then go to the data tab then go to the forecast sheet and select it and it ends in month 13 but we can adjust it so that it will forecast till month 12 so this is our actual cells and then this orange one is our forecast you also have additional options here in addition to that you can change the data type into bars and once you're happy just click on create and you can see it created the forecast some ifs to use some ifs all you need to do is type in equal sign type in some ifs and then press tab and now we have to select the range that we want it to be added we want to find the total cells in the month of January so we select the sum range as cells then we put comma our criteria range is months comma now it asks us about our criteria so it is January we need minimum these three information to make this to work now you can press enter and it will calculate the sum of all the cells in January but you can have true criteria so you can put equal sum ifs tab sum range cells comma criteria one same as before the month and then criteria is this time it's February and we can add another criteria range which would be the products but for what product velo now we got the requested information for the second criteria and press enter fulfilling these two criteria we didn't sell anything in February but if I change this now to September you can see it has changed because in September we sold five here and three here so eight define names for ranges to do that select the ranges that you want to define so each column would have a different range name to do that after selecting the whole table go to the formulas 
and then create from selection here just make sure the top row is selected for your names and then click OK now if you go to the name manager you can see the month product sales all are created with a few clicks if error function for example we want to find out the unit cell cost so what we do is equal cell price divided by the number of units press enter and we want to calculate for all the items double click here and we will see that two of them we get errors because we can't divide a number by zero so what we can do is to add if error so in front of equal sign put if error tab and then we already defined the value we want but what you want it to display if it gets an error because we got error it seems that somebody has entered the sales cost wrong so we can put check so that it will highlight that this needs to be checked then press enter and then bring here and double click here again and now we know that these two rows needs to be checked because we didn't sell any items insert or remove columns or rows so for example we want to insert a new column in between column c and d so what we do is we select column d and then we press ctrl and plus you could do the same thing by selecting the column right clicking and clicking on insert you can do the same thing with rows ctrl and plus you can do the same thing with multiple columns and then ctrl plus now we inserted a lot of rows above to remove them select them and press ctrl and minus and we are back to normal and now we got for example this row and we want to copy it press ctrl c copy the whole row select row 2 and if you now press ctrl and plus it will insert the copied row you can do the same thing with the column field map so we got the various countries and the number of units we sold so we want to graphically represent this information on a map so we select the data then we go to the insert tab then we go a place called maps and then you select field map it creates for you a map make this bigger to suit your size and you can see the different colors represent different data levels so you can change the style something that makes it look more nice and then you can also click on this plus sign and include the data label and now you can see in an instant how much items you have sold different parts if not all the information is displayed properly then you can further increase the size toggling between workbooks so if you look at here I got three workbooks open so this is the first one if I press control and tab I immediately jump to the next workbook as simple as that move columns or rows really simple select the column move your cursor somewhere on the line your symbol changes click on your mouse and drag and drop it any column you want you can select a few columns like this and put them here so we easily move you can do the same thing with the rows select the rows bring them here and now we move so you can add more data up here F4 for toggling between references I've already shown you how to use absolute reference against relative reference but the quicker way to do the dollar sign is to select somewhere before the cell reference and then press F4 and it would automatically create an absolute reference if you press F4 again it would toggle between different options once you're happy just press enter identifying duplicates so imagine we have two data sets they're almost identical but there are some differences so we want to highlight the differences between these two data sets to do that select one of the tables then hold the control key and select the other table now in the home tab go to the conditional formatting and select highlight cells rules and then come down and select duplicate values here you'll find a drop down list select unique and now it will highlight you the cells that are unique at each table so you can see here for example the total is different than the total here links to create a link all you need to do is to go to the insert tab and select link 
you can create a link to a file or you could link to other cells so if you press here place in this document and if you want to link to another sheet for example January you can just click on OK and it creates a link to January if I repeat the same thing again and I select February this time I can change the text to display so I could type Feb if I then click on it then it would take me to the sheet that it is linked to data restriction so in my previous example I've shown you that if you divide a number by zero that gives you an error in the formula but now I want to prevent anybody entering any number less than one to do that select the cell go to the data tab go to the data validation in here click on whole number and here data click on greater than and we want it to be greater than zero so it should be at least one so we can give it a title enter greater than zero we can give a title for the error less than one not allowed and then click on ok so now if I enter zero I get an error message and it doesn't allow me to enter zero because we say it needs to be greater than zero so if I enter one it becomes ok quick access toolbar this area is called quick access toolbar so if you click on here you can add a few more such as quick print open or if you want you can add your own to do that click on more commands the category below is the ones that are the most popular so add a few as you go along there is no harm in adding for example I use save as a lot to create PDFs subscript and superscripts are used a lot in mathematics if you're doing accounting pivot tables are good paste special is always useful and my favorite format painter you can move the location of these commands on the quick access toolbar all you need to do is to click here and you can move it up I will show you what's the benefit of moving it up so if I click OK and now if I want to apply a superscript one way is to just click on it and you convert that to superscript another way once you got this quick access toolbar is by pressing alt and then if you press the number next to it in this example is five it automatically creates the superscript trend lines first let's create a chart select the data go to the insert tab select this insert column and bar chart and select the first 2d column now we got a nice chart but in order to add the trend line you need to go to the design tab by selecting the chart then clicking on add chart element then if you come down here you see a place called trend line there are various ones I like the exponential one because it gives a more realistic prediction of the trend and you have more choices as well and these are some of the other ones so just click on it and here it is joining cell values for example here we got first name and the last name and we want to display the full name to do that type in equal sign then select the first name then put an and sign put a double quote sign space double quote sign and sign and the last name and then press enter and now you can see we got the full name by using these symbols which you can see up here if you double click here we got all the cells filled and if you copy and then paste it in on the same range then you get this option here and if you go here and just click on value you got rid of the formulas and just the full name displayed using proper function imagine somebody has entered these names but the format as you can see is not quite correct so we want to correct this format rather than typing one by one one thing you can do is select another cell put an equal sign and type in proper press tab select the cell that's not proper and then press enter and automatically corrects the uppercase and lowercase so double click in here then select this press ctrl c to copy select this cell press ctrl v then come here and select values and number formatting and now you can see we correct it and now you can just select this and press delete average median and mode average or mean is the total sum divided by the quantity but Excel has got a function to do that for you by just typing equal average tab select the range press enter median 
So if you arrange this data in, in an ascending or descending order, the value in the middle would be considered as the median. To get median, type equal and just type median. Press tab, select the range, press enter. Mode is the most frequently used number in a range. To get it, press equal, type mode, select this, select the range and press enter right click options one of the very underused functions in excel is right click so if you right click on a cell you will get various different options you can see the options on the top you can see options here you can translate you can clear contents you can insert comments you can even pick from a drop down list this is an interesting one so if i select this it give me a drop down of the choices that are highly likely that i will select it's because these are the values that are already filled in in this column c so i can easily change to any other value by just right clicking and pick from the drop down and i can just on the fly change the value or i can right click on this one and clear content or you can right click on any cells and quickly activate quick analysis for the whole table or right click and create a link monthly loan payment calculations so in order to calculate the monthly payment of a loan we need three inputs first the interest rate then the number of months you're planning to pay and the loan amount you need to change the interest rate from a general to a percentage style can see now it became three percent then you need to go to the cell where you want to display the result then click on insert function and search for pmt press enter then it will find pmt just select this first it will ask you for the rate which is three percent so select that cell then it asks you for the number of payments that you're planning to make let's say if you want to pay this loan back in 36 months and the value of the loan which is five hundred thousand then if you press ok it will calculate you you might get a negative result but that's okay all you need to do is to put a minus sign in front and gives you the monthly payment which is quite a big number and you realize that maybe you can't afford to pay 22,000 so you can then increase it to 250 months and then this value decreases to duplicate sheets so I got cell sheets hold your control key press on the cell sheet drag and drop so we create an identical sheet and now if you change some numbers here it will be independent of the first sheet advanced filter to use advanced filter first select the titles paste then choose the criteria as the product then go to the data tab then go to the advanced select the list range criteria we want what we selected here the product and you can select copy to another location otherwise it would change the values in here so we select here then click ok and it filter us the product we can add another product just like that go to that once again list is still the same but criteria we added one more copy to location is the same ok we added the other one we can also add more criteria for the same product let's say we want that VTT sold five units only one then go advanced copy criteria same okay we can also say we want this to be one advanced everything is same just copy okay number of blank cells so imagine we got a table here where we have to fill information but we want to know how many more cells we need to fill in so for that we want to know the number of blank cells for that you need to type in equal and then type in count blank once it counts press tab select the range press enter so it calculates for you that there are eight cells that you need to still fill in to insert date and time using shortcut so let's say we want to insert date all you need to do is to press ctrl and semicolon then enter in the next cell you want to enter the time now press ctrl shift and semicolon and then enter it gives you the time live transpose so we got this data and we want to transpose it but we want to transpose it live what we can do is select this then on the top left corner you can see the number of rows and columns that are selected which is six by two 
so we need to select the same number of rows and columns but in the reverse order so we need to make it six by two you can see in that corner again and then don't click anywhere go to your keyboard and type equal transpose press tab and now select the items you want to transpose and now don't press enter but press Control shift and enter and now any changes we make on our original table would reflect on the new table that we created in the transpose manner analysis tool by default analysis tool is not activated to activate it you need to go to the file you need to go to options you need to go to add-ins you need to go excel add-ins then click on go and then check analysis tool pack then click on ok and then on your data tab you see a new group appeared called data analysis if you click on it it gives you various options such as correlations histogram Fourier series moving average to learn more about data analysis please watch my other videos slicers instead of filter you could use slicers in order to use slicer first we need to create a table select the data then go to the insert tab then click on table make sure my table as headers is selected and then click on ok now we have created our table all we need to do is go to the design tab then click on insert slicer you can insert slicers based on the heading of each table so if I select all I create four different slicers now I can easily choose what I want if I want just albums from Beatles I select Beatles and from Beatles I can select the albums that I want I want the wall and it gives me all the information for that album from Beatles I can remove the filter by clicking here and then I can choose any other artist or any other filter I would like to apply scenario manager to use scenario manager you need to go to the data tab you need to select the cells that you want to change the scenarios for then you need to go to the forecast group and go to the what if analysis and then select scenario manager in here click on add and give it the scenario name let's say worst then click on ok now you can change these three cells that we have selected for example in the worst case scenario let's say interest rate is six percent number of months would be lower and the loan amount would still be the same then click on ok and then we can add another one and this time let's say best case scenario the range of cells that we want to change are selected already then click on ok and the best case scenario is that we pay less interest let's say two percent and we pay over a, a bit longer terms and the loan value is the same click ok and let's add another one and say likely okay likely would be same as what we already got there which is three percent 250 months and the loan amount is same so if i click on worst and then click on show it will show me the worst scenario which is 300 dollars or pounds per month that you would have to pay for that scenario best show 100 pounds but likely is 150 pounds and if you want a summary of the scenarios that you created click on the summary here it gives you two options to create the report we go with the scenario summary option and then click on ok and it creates for you a, another spreadsheet and it gives you the current value best worst best and likely and then you can quickly compare which one is the scenario that you would like to go a longer and cheaper term or a shorter but more expensive term this can be used for comparing different mortgages and houses car loans and more page break review so if i want to save this excel as pdf i could just go here click on save as select a location click here change to pdf click save i see a lot of extra pages that i didn't want to save as pdf so i go back to my spreadsheet i go to the third tab here called page break preview and i can see the preview of the print layout or the pdf layout and i can see i got some data in here that's why it includes this so i can drag just put the solid blue borders around the data that i want to save as if i extend it in one direction and if i extend it long enough i'll create another page and i get another dotted blue line which i can move to create two separate pages or for this example 
this is the data we want then go file save as override and now it's all in one page removing grid lines there are two ways to remove grid lines first way if you want to remove the grid line of the whole spreadsheet you will go to the view tab and uncheck the grid lines then also you can select this table go to the home tab and create all borders but another way to remove grid lines is to let's put a grid line back is to select the columns go to the home tab and change the fill to white and now we removed the background from that section and we can do the same thing in other sections protect workbook so imagine we have got this data and we are happy with the information so we make our last change and we don't want anybody else to change this data what we can do is to go to the review tab then select protect sheet in here you can put a password or you can leave it blank and click on ok so if anybody wants to double click and change any value they would not be able to do it because it's protected we have just protected this sheet but you can protect the whole workbook or you can even protect some of the ranges for example you could just make it so that the person could only edit the number of items sold and not change their sell price in order to unprotect you can just come to the review and click on unprotect you can also do the same thing by right clicking on the sheet and protect the sheet and hence unprotected from the same place unit conversions if you're from an engineering background you definitely would have come across converting one unit to the other for example from meter to feet but the easiest way is to use the convert function to do that put a equal sign type in convert press tab select the original value you want to convert put comma now select the unit that you want to convert from which is meter in this case comma and select the unit to which you want to convert it to which is to foot double click on that and now if you press enter it converts from meters to foot you also can make it more automatic by double clicking on it selecting the meter and selecting the meter from another cell same with the foot so this would be d3 enter so now it automatically converts based on the unit on the right side as well so if i change feet to meters it will convert it from meter to meter centimeter converts it to centimeter you should just make sure the units in here matches the units that are defined in this function for example you can't type here foot it wouldn't work it should be ft live currency conversion so imagine we got here 150 pounds per month and we want to convert it into us dollars but we want it to be live so every time the rate changes this would automatically update to do that you need to go to the data tab you need to go to get data and then from other sources from web and then go to this website called xe.com forward slash currency here you can see some live currency rates but if you're interested in any particular country you can select that from here as well and follow the same procedure then you need to come here and copy the link press ctrl c then go back to our excel and ctrl v to paste the link then press ok and now it shows the number of tables that this website has got very interested in live currency rates and displays you the table they got and all you need to do is then click on load and it shows the table in another spreadsheet that it created for you then if you go back to our original sheet and type in equal then type in the original currency multiply it go back to the currency table and we go to great british pound to us dollar enter and then change this to dollars and it would automatically update your british pound to dollars but you can also set a refresh rate by going to the table and then going to the query and clicking here to refresh or you can go to the data tab then click on properties and then click on here query properties and also you can click here to refresh it every 60 minutes as well as here to refresh it whenever you open this document you can adjust the timing to whatever suits you then click ok click ok and now we got a live currency conversion 
hide cells so now imagine we don't want to display the rate at which we are charging the interest and we want to hide this to do that select these two cells then go here click format then go to custom and here remove the general and type in three semicolons and press ok and you can see it hide it so if i select them it's still there but it's not visible remove blank rows so if we select this table we got a couple of blank rows all we need to do now is press ctrl and g then go on special then click on blanks then click on ok now the blank rows are selected automatically for you if you got a large data it's particularly useful now all you need to do is to press ctrl and minus and then press ok it removed the blank rows inserting text so imagine we have a very long explanation here and it's all fit in one cell and spread it across various cells the best way to do this is remove this text you can cut it then click on insert tab and click on text box and select text box now you just draw a text box and press ctrl v or just type whatever you want and you can adjust its size the way you want you can even move it and looks much neater and now if i write anything it automatically fills in the box number of working days it's really simple to get the number of working days all you need to do is to type equal network days press tab select the start date comma end date enter so we got 67 working days between these two dates but if you want to include some holidays in between these two dates what you can do is to select network days start day end date and then you can include the holiday date as well and then press enter you can see we got one holiday here hence number of working days change from 67 to 66 linking excel to word so we got this table and we want to link this to our word document first close this spreadsheet save then go to your word document in the word document go to the insert tab then go to the object then select create from file click on browse select the spreadsheet click on insert check this box called link to file click on ok here we have it we got a table and it is live test it go back to your spreadsheet let's add new information let's say total and also let's change this to 10 and then close this save go back to the word right click on it and click on update link you can see it's changed to 10 total 93 advanced select and replace go to your home tab select here find and select click on find type one of the products as an example Velo. click on find all press ctrl a to select all then close this and it selects the cells that have that product now you can highlight them you can change their font color or you can clear all that information or you can change their style also if you go back to here and click on replace you can change that product to a new product click on replace all click ok close and we replaced that product with a new product wrap text for example this column the values are small but the title is long so we want to reduce the width of this column to the desired width we want but we want the title to be visible so you can select the title and then click on wrap text and it would wrap it in that cell recording macros you need to go to the developer tab then go to the record macro give your macro a name copying table there shouldn't be any space between the words you can give it a shortcut and now type the description click ok recording starting so any click i make here it's recorded so if i press ctrl v ctrl v twice i'm happy with the recording now i can click on stop and the macro is created for example now if i delete this and if i go here to the macros i can see my available macros and the one that i've just created if i click on run it will repeat the same process again if i delete again and use the shortcut key that i've created Control a it runs a macro again inserting symbols imagine i want to have a symbol for total i can go to the insert tab then click on symbol here search for symbol click ok 
and I select Sigma click on insert you can see it appear here and then you can close this and now we have it format painter one of the best tools in Excel is format painter the format we got here is dollar sign and we got some blue lines underneath in order to copy the format you can select any one of this format then click on format painter and select any other cells that you want to have the same format and now we got two cells with the same format it's also one way to clear the formats so if I select an empty cell with no formats and then click on format painter and click on any number of cells it totally removes all the formats that was applied to those cells inserting emojis so Windows 10 got a new feature that allows you to insert emojis anywhere you want but in this example I will show you how to use it in Excel first let's create a new column and call it gender now press window and semicolon we get the emoji window open on top of our Excel window and we can go to gender and select another one then you can close this you can copy and paste you can copy and paste and now we have created emojis in Excel in this column for gender to make it more funky what you can do is select the whole thing go and create a quick table and then in the design tab click slicer select gender click OK and now you can just select the gender who you are interested in and it just shows a table with that gender only obviously you can insert different emojis again window and semicolon you can also insert some cow emojis or even some symbols that you can easily access from here. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful and you learned a lot of these tricks and tips, please support my channel by subscribing and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.